Thank you, Jan, and thank you, choir, and Percy, and Ashley, uh, for leading us this morning in worship. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and I'm so thankful that you all are here. Today's message is going to be, of course, centered around Thanksgiving. The title of the message is Choosing to Be Thankful. Uh, It's a choice that we make. We choose to be thankful in this circumstance, or we choose not to be thankful in this circumstance. Some circumstances are a lot easier to be thankful for than other circumstances in our lives as well. We're going to be looking at that and seeing what God has to say to us this morning. Uh, But I want to ask you, if you will, if you just take your Bibles and turn with me, I want to look at one verse of Scripture uh, this morning, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 18. And as you always do, let's honor the reading of God's Word as we stand here today, if you're able to do that. And that will be 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. You have this verse memorized. I would almost say that 90% of the people in this church, you have this verse memorized. But it's one that many times is so hard to live out. So I want us to see what it says and how we are to apply it to our lives here today. Verse 18, chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything we're to give thanks, and this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and for me. Father, thank you for the reading of your word this morning, and Lord, just a few words, just one short verse, but Lord, it has so much to say to us. And Lord, whenever we read it without your strength and without your power and without your Holy Spirit working within us, or even as we read it without having a relationship with you, the first thing we look at when we see this, Father, this that's impossible. There's no way that can happen. And Father, I pray today that you will show us how and why it is to happen, that you will open our eyes widely, our ears will be open so we can hear clearly, and we will be ready, Lord, to be moved by your presence as we already have been through the song service today. Thank you for those that so faithfully prepared to stand here today to sing and to play, to speak and to share, and Lord, today we are so thankful that we can stand in your presence this morning, Lord. So naked and, Lord, needing help and, and, and not sure many times where to turn, but you're the one that clothes us. You're the one that, that comforts us, and you're the one that reveals your perfect, divine, holy will within our lives. And I pray you'll do that this morning. I pray that you'll use me, help me to do that, Father. Help me to, to be a demonstration of that through the preaching of your word today. That it not just be something that we do because it's Sunday, but we do what we do today because we're having another opportunity to remember that this is your day, the Lord's day, and that we want to be in your will this morning and tomorrow and the days to come. So Lord, speak your word to us. Give us the ability to understand and apply to our lives that we'll leave here motivated and encouraged, that we'll have lives full of boldness to stand firm on your word. The foundation is like no other foundation, the foundation of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, you have your way, and thank you for what you're going to do. And as John the Baptist said, Father, that I may decrease so that you can increase, that I would get out of the way and that you would see, be seen and failed and experienced in this room. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go ahead and be seated this morning. And once you're, as you're being seated again, thank you for being faithful to be here in God's house this morning. I don't know what your week has been like. I don't know all the things that you've had going on. I'm sure there's good, good things and there's been some difficult things and all the in-between kind of things that this past week has brought in your life. Uh, it, it's a difficult, difficult many times for us in this world we live because we many times can't be prepared and we're not expecting certain things to come our way. I believe those are some of the thoughts and the direction we're to put in our mind and our heart here this morning as we get ready to see the direction God would have us to go in this area of giving thanks. As I was looking at preparing this message, getting ready for today, 
one of the things that, that kept coming to my mind, and this is really not a, the, the message per se, but it's in the message today, is how thankful I am for so many things. Uh, sometimes it takes seasons like this when we see the leaves turning and the beauty of the leaves and, and see fall is here when fall and pumpkins remind us it's a, it's a time to celebrate Thanksgiving. That we not overlook Thanksgiving and jump to Christmas, but we focus in on this thing called Thanksgiving. But so often, many times when Thanksgiving comes, is when we begin to be more thankful. When we're reminded of the things that we have to be thankful for or should be thankful for. And, and this morning as I was preparing and even preparing before I went off to India for this message, I kept over and over being so thankful for my church family. Uh, being thankful for you, for your patience with me, uh, for your prayers for me and for my family, uh, how you've been faithful in your giving and your service to the Lord, how you've been faithful not to allow the old devil to rock your boat to the place that whenever maybe you turned over, you didn't give up, but you put a hand out up to the one that was there for Jesus to pick us up and put us back in the boat, and we continue to sail on. I, I like to think of the church, the church of Jesus Christ here this morning as church is that many times the, bo the boat begins to rock and sometimes the boat may tip over, but we get back up in the boat and we continue to go to our destination where God has called us to. And I believe that's kind of the case in your life and in my life right now, that there are ups and downs, there's rocky times, but in the midst of it, our ultimate goal is to be found faithful on the other side, to be found faithful going where God leads us, being found faithful to not give up and to turn our backs on the things that God has so richly and dearly planted and placed within our lives and within his church. So today I'm thankful for you, church family, and I many times I hesitate, not I don't hesitate, but I feel like I, I don't share that with you enough to tell you how appreciative I am and how thankful I am for you and for your prayers and, and making my family a true family and being able to serve with you, many of you, for many, many, many years and, and others of you getting started for a few years uh, and pray that many more down the road, but I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for your love and your love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thankful for how God is working within you and within me and within our surroundings. I believe as we come to this one passage of Scripture here in 1 Thessalonians, as he says, in everything, give thanks. It's, good, it's easy for me to thank God for you. It's, it's, matter of fact, it flows from my lips without any problem at all. I don't have to make up anything. I don't have to force it out. It just automatically comes because there's a deep love for you and for what you mean to me in the ministry here at West Acres. But there are some things, as he says here, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. So then I have to look and, and see, okay, over the years as I thank the Lord for my church family and how faithful they've been and how encouraging they've been to me and to my family over the years here at West Acres. And then I think about some really difficult, hard times that we've gone through. And just as I thank the Lord for you, I'm to thank the Lord for those times as well. To give him thanks and to give him praise for, for what has happened as we've kept our eyes on him and been able to see him work and move and grow us, strengthen our muscles and, and, and get us where we've never been before in our walk, our run, our relationship with God. So this morning we come together and hopefully we'll understand even more what it means that in everything give thanks for he says this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is for you. Now, as I think about all that I've said up until this point in time, there are many thoughts in Scripture that are clearly expressed. There are many that are clearly expressed, but our response to many of them from time to time is simply this, that brings confusion to us. Could God, have you ever said this, whenever you've read a passage of Scripture, whenever God has led you to do something or to act in a certain way, and you said, you may ask yourself, does God really mean for me to do that? Or, or does this scripture really guide me to go over here and say this? If, is this really, I'm not really sure if this is how I'm supposed to take this scripture in my life. I'm not sure if this is to be the outcome. I'm not sure the walk and relationship I'm to have because of the scripture, I'm not, I'm not real clear on it. Well, this verse of scripture can never be put in that category. It can never be put in that category. It's evident in this verse that God intends for us to be thankful in all circumstances. To be thankful in all circumstances at, at all times. 
All circumstances and all times pretty much is all circumstances and all times. That's what it means. That's what the scripture teaches. So when we choose to give thanks to God in all circumstances, there's a powerful, don't miss this please, and may I not miss it either, there is a powerful impact in every, every area of our Christian life whenever we choose to be thankful in all circumstances and all times. Now you must understand with me here today, giving thanks keeps us and keeps me aware of the presence of God in our lives. Whenever you're thankful for things, even though they have been painful and difficult, maybe that's the situation where the boat has turned over and you're thankful in the presence of it. When you're being thankful, you're recognizing the presence of God in your life. You're recognizing that he's there with you, even though it's hard and has brought tears and brought heartache and pain, that he is there with you and he promises to be there with you. And there's joy in being able to express that today. You see, whenever we praise him, despite our obstacles, despite our pain, we understand that we are not alone. Whenever we're going through difficult times and we can can say, God, help me, I want to praise you, and you praise him, it reminds us we're not walking this terrible hard road or this valley in life all by ourselves. That we have the presence of the Lord with us. We have to understand that our problems are his as well as ours. He's taken upon, he's taken upon himself the problems and issues of our lives. See, by thanking God in all difficult seasons, we have a sense of his redemptive involvement in all of our trials and all of our temptations. We have help, we have his presence, and we can take always our troubles to him and share our burdens with him. That's the great thing about the Lord God. There's so many wonderful great things about him, how he provides and speaks and guides and directs and heals and helps, all of those things. But he says that we can take everything to him, and he desires us to take it to him. He is there to listen. He's there to listen, and as he's there to listen, he's there to comfort us. And as he listens and brings comfort to us, he, he brings strength to us. He strengthens our heart and our life. So when we give thanks, we're motivated. Again, we're motivated again to discover God's purpose in our problems. To discover God's purpose and plan in the midst of our problems. Discover God's plan in the midst of the unknowns that have kind of derailed us and we're not sure where to go or where to turn or what to do next. One thing that he wants us to be aware of, that he's there with us in our problems He will guide us through them. God may quickly reveal. Many times he has for me and I'm sure he has for you. He may reveal to you quickly what his purposes are for your circumstances. But sometimes he may not reveal his purpose for months or maybe even years. He may hold off on revealing that to you. So the significance in giving thanks is that you know that God can work out his plan that you know he can work out his plan regardless of the evil intentions and actions of other people. Nothing can put out the fire of his purpose for you. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Being able to be in India and, and, and being able to, to be amongst the people there and, and to worship with them there and walk down the street with the Indian people and being able to see all that's going on in their lives. They're some of the most thankful people that I've ever been around. And then I have to scratch my head and look around and see how can you be thankful? How can you be thankful for the stuff that's all around with all this taking place? But there are people that I know, those believers that have given their heart and life to Jesus Christ, they stand in open-eyed amazement and shouting praises to God and thanking him for his goodness and his grace, even in the midst of their poverty. Their poverty and their, 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 their religions that are around them, the closing the door of Christianity that does not get them down and discouraged where they give up. It causes them in the midst of their pain and sorrow and, and struggle to cause them to even be more thankful because in their thankfulness, the presence of God is revealed more than ever. Able to see that in their lives and how we as an American society of people that have become less and less thankful in the world we live in for the goodness and the grace of God. 
See, remember this, giving thanks, giving thanks positions you to receive the fullness, the fullest extent of, of God's blessings in your life. See, God has a bucket load full of blessings, and he fills it up over and over. Once he dumps all of the blessings out, he goes back and fills it up for more, and he never runs out of blessings. But those blessings can only be given to you and given to me if we are in a position where we can be blessed. By giving thanks to God. You can't live the way you want to live, do what you want to do, go where you want to go, act the way you want to act, and wonder why that the blessings of God has not, have not been poured upon your life. The ugly blessings come to us in some of the greatest ways of all is whenever you and I are in the dungeon, when you and I are in the valleys of life, and we choose to praise God and thank God and worship Him. I believe that's when He begins to pour out His many, many blessings upon our lives. He's faithful to do that, and He desires to do that even here this morning. Giving thanks helps us learn to submit our expectations to his plan. To submit to his plan. To give over to his plan. To give up on mine and say, my plan is your plan. Your plan is my plan. And I want to follow that plan. The Bible says again, it says in everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. How many times, how many times have we prayed, Lord, I will do whatever you want me to do. Lord, please hear me. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I will do whatever you want me to do if you'll just show me your will. I remember as a little boy and even as a teenager, I remember praying that prayer probably more times than I can even remember. Lord, I'll do this for you. I'll serve you. But I just see in Scripture that it's very important that your people know your will. So how can I know your will? So I'll do anything for you if you will please show me your will. Well, can I tell you here this morning that giving thanks to God is God's will for your life. Giving thanks to God is God's will for your life. In other words, we are demonstrating God's word within us. That his living word is demonstrating and changing lives because it's lived out through us. Our, our well-being to, is to mesh with his and, 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 and the attitudes that need to be changed, that he will change us and draw us unto him. So this morning, here's the plan. I believe it's God's plan for us, but I want you to notice with me today several benefits that we receive when we give thanks to God in all things. I preached about 11 or 12 sermons while I was away in India in a matter of two and a half days, and man, it was, uh, some, it was a lot of preaching, but one of the things that kept me preaching and kept me going were the prayers, but was the, one of the great things that in the middle of the sermon, if uh, my translator said hallelujah, the whole group of people shouted hallelujah. So as I preach through this message here today, if that just happens to come out, uh, you know your response is to give back another hallelujah. To praise the Lord that we can gather here today and have thankful hearts and to be where God wants us to be, worshiping him. First of all, I want you to notice this, this with me today. When we give thanks... When we give thanks to God in all things, it automatically reminds us of our complete dependence in Jesus Christ. When we give him thanks in all things and in all circumstances, it reminds us that we are giving complete dependency in Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you in this situation. I thank you in this situation. I thank you that I'm so helpless in all of this that you are my only hope. Lord, you alone can rescue me. Somebody even here today or maybe somebody watching this morning, maybe you're at that point and you just need to get on your knees and cry out to God, I'm desperate for you. I'm, I need you in my life and I want your healing and help and encouragement to come my way. See, we are to, to, to depend on God for every breath. We're to depend on God for every step we take because he is our creator. He, he created you and me. We are his creation. And the Bible says not only did he create and not only are we his creation, but it says that we are made in his image. We're made in the image of almighty God. So if God does not show up in a mighty way in my life, 
If he doesn't show up in a mighty way in your life, I and we will have no hope and nothing to look forward to, nothing to expect in the future, in the days to come. See, our thanksgiving recognizing and and affirms his sovereignty over every area of our lives. Over every area of our lives. So notice something else here with me this morning, number two. When we give thanks to God in all things, Our trust in God is strengthened. It recognizes the presence of God in our lives, number one. And number two, whenever we give thanks in all things, our trust in God is strengthened. Yes, trusting God. Trusting God is most difficult when we do not understand the reason for our pain. When we do not understand the reason for our affliction. And when we do not have all the answers that we must trust God, isn't it most difficult to trust God when you don't know why and you don't know what and you don't know where this came from and you're trying to figure it out and, and I didn't deserve this or, or what did I do wrong to, to have to be where I am now? And many times it's most difficult for us to trust God. See, giving thanks is the highest expression of trust. It's the highest expression of showing the Lord God that we trust him even when we don't understand. That's where that faith factor comes in. We may not see the reason. We may not understand the reason. We don't know what tomorrow's going to hold, but we're trusting God that he does. We're trusting him that he's going to guide us and carry us and mold us and make us, get us to the other side where we'll be found faithful, stronger, strengthened by him, by following him in obedience. See, giving thanks is the highest expression of trust. And we stand firmly in our faith knowing that God is not and will not change. He's not ever going to change. He's going to be the same. And the scripture says that he will hear us and he will help us in his time. And meanwhile, meanwhile, our loyalty and commitment are revealed by our thanksgiving. So when all is light, when all is easy, when all is going pretty smooth, trust is easy. Trust is easy. But when the lights go out and the world turns dark, trust is the evidence of our devotion to Christ. Giving thanks to God in all things leads to rejoicing and praising him. You know, Paul not only told the Thessalonians to give thanks in all things, but he said, if you look in verse just prior to that, he says, but rejoice always, kind of the same theme of giving thanks in all things, but rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. So how can we rejoice if we do not give thanks to the Father? Remember this, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Number three this morning. When we give thanks to God in all things, we impact our Christian witness in a positive manner. This is one of my favorite points of all the points. It's whenever we give thanks to God in all things, we get the attention of people that are wondering how in the world can they do that? I could never do that. In other words, your friends watch you go through hardship and they are amazed at the level of your trust. They're amazed at the joy that's in your life. They say things like this, you know, I don't know how you can endure such problems. If I had to deal with your situation, I would probably be on drugs or I would probably start drinking. I just don't think I could cope with it. What sustains you? How are you able to do that? And then what a wonderful opportunity for you to share your faith in a loving, powerful, wise God. You see, your faith is tested and proven, and others know it. Your faith is proven, it's tested. And and when somebody may not ever listen to what you have to say, Jesus loves you, Jesus has intervened in my life, Jesus has forgiven me, they may listen to a little bit, they may not listen to anything. 
but when they see your life being a demonstration of trusting God in the midst of sorrow and pain, that speaks volumes to them. It opens their eyes to see there's something genuine, there's something different in that person's life. Your life and my life are designed to bring glory to God. To bring glory to God in all things when we give thanks to if in everything, we bring him glory in a special way. Here he is, he's exalted. Not our discouragement and trial that we're experiencing, but he's exalted. Not our pain and sorrow, but he's exalted in the midst of all of it. He's lifted up. What does America need more than anything? They need Jesus lifted up. They need the church to lift up the name of Jesus, to lift up a relationship with Jesus and see God work and move and transform and change within our lives. Wow. Number four, when we give thanks to God in all things, we're able to focus our attention on God and not our circumstances. We're able to focus on God. It's really easy to dwell on problems. It really is. We all know that through past experiences or maybe even present experiences. We spend all day thinking and talking about them, we, we, of what's going on and the pain and the misery that I'm going through. When someone sees us, they say, have you heard about the problem he has? Have you heard about the issue that they're dealing with? But by thanking God in the midst of our dilemma, the faithfulness and power of the person of Jesus Christ becomes the center of attention. And that's what he's desiring more in my life and in your life and in the life of this church, that Jesus Christ becomes the center of attention. And if we major on the problem, you know what happens? The problem grows. If we major on the issue, the issue grows. If we major on the hurt and the pain, the hurt and the pain, it grows. If we major on the ability of God to help us and keep us, the problems diminish. They begin to dissipate. It may not go away, but the greatness of God is highlighted. And we see him high and lifted up. And church, that's the very reason why Paul could write as he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. He says this, listen carefully. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, when, well, what Paul meant was the, that when we compare our trials against the background of God's eternal glory and provision for his children, our suffering, he says, is indeed minimal. It's, it's minimal. It's not, it's not going to defeat us. It's not going to overtake us. It's not going to destroy our minds because focusing on God, focusing on God's unceasing care, we can endure our problems. I wish I could stand up here and preach a message and, and tell you how you would not have any more problems or how that if you have problems now that we can get rid of those today or that when you leave here today and walk through the doors to get in your car to go eat or go home that you'll never ever experience a trial or a, a tribulation or a circumstance that is, that's overwhelming. I wish I could find a passage of scripture and preach that all day long. But it's not found in God's word. But it is found in his word that there's going to be trouble, and there's going to be trouble upon trouble, and there's going to be issues upon issues, there's going to be disappointment upon disappointments, there's going to be pain upon pain. It's going to come to the Christian. It's going to come to the non-believer. But it's going to come to all of us. The great thing for a believer, he gives us the ingredients that are needed so that when those times come, we actually grow stronger and closer with the Lord. 
Instead of running and moving apart, moving away from him, we're, we're drawn to him. We get closer to him. And the closer you get to him, your valley's not quite so deep. Your pain's not quite so painful. All the things that we face that get a hold of us, are, are, they're taken by surprise in many ways by the presence of God. And we realize that God is in control, that he's working, that he's doing great things. So again, by focusing on God's unceasing care, we can endure our problems. You see, when, when they weigh against eternity's blessings, our pain is not so great. Our problem is not so overwhelming. Our headache is not so devastating. God has prepared more wonderful things for us than we can possibly imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's a great place for one. More than we can imagine. Our external problems may be overwhelming. They may produce great strain and pressure in and on our emotions. But when we give thanks, somehow God restores our inner being. Thanksgiving refreshes the soul in the harshest of circumstances. Did you hear that? Thanksgiving refresh, refreshes the soul in the harshest of circumstances. There's a divine energy which is released that enables us to keep on going, to keep on trusting, to keep on hoping, to keep on seeing God doing those wonderful things that he promises that he will do in our lives. So church, the more we give thanks, the more Christ-like we become because he said this is the will of God. The more we give thanks, the more radiant our witness and personality becomes because Jesus is seen and working in our lives. Now, we may want out of our problems. I don't really know anybody that would want out of their problems. We may want out of our problems. We may want to escape our problems. We may try to complain and argue with God. You know, even Paul said, if you could just remove this, this one infirmity from me, just remove it from me. I believe he pleaded and cried out to the Lord God, please remove it from me. And of all people, wouldn't you have thought that God would have heard the apostle Paul and he would have removed that thorn from his life? But you know what? He, in, in many ways, he did. Because he said, Paul, I'm not going to remove that, but I'm going to do something even better. My grace, I'm going to give you which is sufficient for every single need you have. It'll get you through this. It will empower you through it. It's going to strengthen your witness. It's going to cause you to be closer to me than you've ever been before. I just see that and I picture that within my own life every single day. So we may want out of our problems. But if today you begin to thank God in every circumstance, you will discover new power and hope as a believer. Would you, just, would you try it? It is the week of Thanksgiving. What about just trying it? Just seeing that, that in all things that you go through beginning today, all the way through this week, that you either out loud or you silently within your heart, you say, God, thank you. You may even have to say, God, I don't like that. And God, that didn't feel good. God, that disappoints me. But I want to thank you. And see how God begins to work in your life and draw you closer to him and leads you to a place of being able to experience that new power and hope in a believer's life. Again, again, church, your circumstances may not change, but you will be transformed you will be transformed. Your joy will increase. Your love will overflow. And your inner strength will begin to flourish like never before. And church, if you are really to be thankful in your heart, then there must be a thorough understanding of where things come from. 
listen to this, my very existence, my very existence, I owe to the Lord. I owe to the Lord. In fact, he holds a threefold right of ownership over me and over you too. Don't forget that. Don't forget who owns you. And it's not that he owns you in the sense that you're a slave or that you're a robot, but he owns you because he loves you and cares for you. But there's a threefold ownership here. First of all, we see here, he created me. He created me. He made me through the miracle of birth. He did that for you. That is so simple that even a little child can understand that. But he wants us to be reminded of it here this morning. Secondly, he preserves me. He gives me, here I'm going to say it again, he gives me breath. He gives me breath of life. My heart beats at his command. It beats at his command. I, I went to the doctor on Fridays for a physical, and the doctor pulled out a blood pressure cuff and all that, and he checked my blood pressure, and he looked at me, and he said, Larry, you're still alive. <laughs> but you know what? It was really nice to hear that because I was still alive, and, and I'm still alive today, but, but what God is wanting us to do is to be reminded of who keeps me alive, of who keeps you alive, and what has he placed in you so that you can demonstrate and live out while you are alive, so that others can see the preciousness and the kindness and the gloriousness of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. See, he gives breath to life. My heart beats at his command. My vital organs function according to his will. And thirdly, and you might want to get ready to say a hallelujah here, but thirdly, I am his by the right of redemption. We have been redeemed. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb that he set us apart he adopted us as children of the king. And we have inherited all that he has to offer. And he desires us to receive it. I am his by the right of redemption. He bought me with his own blood at Calvary. And everything I have is from him. My wife is from him. My three boys are from him. My two daughter-in-laws are from him. My grandbaby, did I tell you all I'm a granddad? <laughs> that I, I, my grandbaby, my, my little grandson is from him. My mama that God gave me is from him. My church family that he allowed me to come and do life with for such a long time is from him. All of that comes from him. Now, I didn't do anything to deserve it. I didn't, I didn't do anything to make him give me more or less. He deemed that. He redeemed me. He responded with glory and grace and said, he is my child and I'm going to give him these things. I'm going to bless him as he promises to bless us as we come underneath his wings. Church, if I could only drive this point home today, all you have and all you are is because of God. You need to get that in your mind. It needs to soak deep down in your heart and in your life that what you have is from Almighty God. It wasn't because you're educated. It wasn't because you're one color or another. It wasn't because you're, you're big or small or it doesn't matter what college or whether you went to college. The Bible tells us here in the Word of God, all you have and all you are is because of Almighty God. I heard of a fellow who wished to sell his home, one of my favorite illustrations. He had a friend who was a real estate agent. So he called him, I need to talk to you. 
he came over and he said these words. He said, I want you to run an ad in the paper and I want you to sell my home. It's time. I want you to sell my home and get rid of it as quickly as you possibly can. I don't want to lose a lot of money, but I want to, I want to get rid of my home as quickly as I can. So if you would, get the ad running as quickly as possible. The man told him how many rooms it had. It was air conditioned, had new carpet in it. He told him all about the shrubs in the yard and how expensive they were. He told him about the fruit trees in the backyard. He described the home in detail, complete detail. And when he finished, the agent said, I'll read it back to you and you tell me how it sounds. And he read the ad about his beautiful three-bedroom home and two baths and a good strand of grass in the yard and fruit trees in the backyard and a new roof put on last year and central air conditioning, a remodeled carport that held two cars. He kept reading until the owner stopped him immediately. He said, wait a minute, stop. That house is not for sale. All my life, I've wanted a place just like that. But I didn't realize I had it until you read the ad, until you read it back to me. So today, the challenge for me and the challenge for you, give thanks in all things. And then watch God work.